Just, just kind of hit it with a wire brush. You can see that I started to grind down this end. What we're going to do is, and this is my first time doing this, this is a solid piece of brass. What we're going to try to do is, is we're going to try to turn this into, say, stud, but have an even on both sides, and we're going to try to keep all the nice little hashes in there. So, let's see what we can do. All that I'm doing right here is trying to grind down the edges on the I and the O to make them not look too recessed. Therefore, the hash marks I put in later won't look irregular. I'm just using a Dremel tool and a simple grinding stone. I'm sure there's many other ways to do this, but this seemed to be the first thing that came to my head. And it is working okay. All I've done is gone ahead and actually ground off this side here because I, I know that we're not going to be able to duplicate that ridge on this side. I've grinded down the hole so it's countersunk because I know that we're not going to be able to duplicate that on this side because I want to keep the even spacing off the S to the hole and the S to the end as I'm going to keep off the D to the hole and the D to the end. So now I've got this done. It's time to see if we can cut it and match those hash marks. So right here I'm going to measure, use some die chem layout fluid, and describe uh, to, to mark a straight line to where I'm going to be cutting. I'm doing it pretty terrible off camera here for you. Uh, but the, it helps to use a scribe and a straight edge to make sure that you really get this cut perfect. Take a square and mark it out. That's going to give us a nice, good, clean line with the marking fluid and the scrub to get as close as we possibly can. Next. Here I'm just using a Dremel with a reinforced cutoff wheel. If I were to do this again, I would definitely do it differently. I'd use a hacksaw. Uh, just been a lot more precise. Um, seems like when you're not using a power tool, it comes out a little bit smoother sometimes. Now it's time to match these angles on this side. So what we'll do is we'll measure them, we'll mark them, and then we'll cut them. Now I've got our angles matched. Next it's time to find the hole. To 
find the hole, we'll just take a measurement. To find the hole, we'll just take a measurement from the other one. And we'll go to about center. So as you can see, we're at the far outside edge of our S and we're about centered on the hole. We'll relay that message or that uh, measurement to this side. Now we found our distance this way, we need to find our distance this way to get the center of the hole. So once again, we'll measure. We're gonna measure from the outside edge to the center of the hole once again. So now that we have our hole marked out, once we find the right size drill bit that's going to fit for this side so we have the same size hole, we're going to drill it out. I made a couple big mistakes here. Um, I didn't use a center punch, which would have made my hole perfect. Instead, my drill did walk a little bit, and I ended up having to wallow out the hole at the end. Make sure that this upper part is even on both sides and we aren't right here. So what we need to do is, is make a determination whether we want to eliminate this band or if we should just clean this side up and this bottom up and then match this side to it. I think we're just going to clean these up and match this side to it and see what we come up with. All I've been using this whole time is either just a Dremel or this is a Harbor Freight's version of what they call a carving tool. It has a variable speed on a foot pedal and uh, you can put all the same uh, eighth inch to one thirty second um, bits in there and uh, you're able to do the same thing as a Dremel. This looks like it's going to be pretty even match. 
Now, next step is we're going to put layout fluid back down on it and then we're going to find our hash marks and see if we can't duplicate those. Now, in order to duplicate the hash marks, there's many ways to go about this. Uh, my needle files are not quite small enough, so I'm going to see if this tiny diamond tip uh, for the Dremel will actually duplicate the marks for me. We'll do some small tests just to find out. After doing this, I realized that I would have much rather went and got a hand engraving tool and I think I would have just got a lot straighter lines and a lot more precise. The power tool slips and uh, it falls off of line. Uh, it turned out okay, but definitely if I were to do it again, I would use an engraving tool to get the lines a lot straighter and just cleaner looking. But I am overall happy with how it turned out.
using the dremel for the engraving was a bit difficult. Um, I then just cleaned it up with a green scotch pad and then used a brass wire wheel to try to fade out the other hash marks and my new ones to kind of blend them to make sure that my new ones didn't look too definitive. Um, it turned out okay. Definitely no professional, but eh, probably make it pass.